Hi everyone, welcome to module 8, our final module where we'll be talking about planning transitions. I hope you've enjoyed the course and will enjoy the learning in this module where we're going to focus on not only applying parts B and C of IDEA to focus on how we can best support children from birth to age 5, <clears throat> but we're also going to be talking about teaming models and wrapping around um, our core objective to design appropriate interventions based on the assessments that, that we are giving. So the module tasks include um, creating an activity-based matrix, <laughs> and that matrix is going to be based on an IEP that you're going to write. <clears throat> that IEP and the activity-based matrix are both based on Brad. <coughs> Excuse me, we did his Battelle analysis last week. You'll also be finishing up Discussion Board 4 and responding to peers. So this week, make sure that you check the announcements and keep up with your grades. Let me know if you have any questions. You're going to complete the assignments we just discussed. And if you've got questions, ask them here. For the IEP, in addition to the IEP resources that we checked out earlier in the module, you're going to use the rubric <coughs> and the scoring guide to help develop your assignment. So as you work through <laughs> the assignment, you're going to start with the rubric, and I would recommend going down the exemplary column. You're going to be looking at present levels, um, writing those based on the current Kentucky standards in the Kentucky IEP documents that we have from, I, from KDE. You're also going to look at considerations of special factors and then write three goals. Each of those goals are going to be standards-based, and benchmarks will be broken down appropriately. So to write the IEP in Kentucky, we would use Infinite Campus. And because we do not have access to Infinite Campus, you're going to use this template that I developed based on the Kentucky IEP. And I went ahead and put it in this format because A, we're familiar with it, and B, um, just to make sure you fill in each section. So in the top sections, you're just going to add the information that we know discuss Brad's current academic performance, anything we know in health and vision, his social emotional status, <coughs> any other needs that he might have, and you're going to um, answer the questions, does his behavior impede his learning? If it does, you will need to highlight um, either yes or no, and the same for English proficiency if the child is blind or has a visual impairment, has communication needs, and is deaf or hard of hearing. Remember that all of these sections are broken down in detail in that KDE IEP document. You'll also need to note if he needs assistive technology and if he needs any services based on those above special factors. Here you're going to write his goals and you're going to follow the KDE format for that and then at least three benchmarks. <coughs> you're going to highlight which type of progress you're going to um, use, uh, which, I'm sorry, which method of measurement you're going to use to show progress. And note that all progress has to be, in Kentucky, concurrent with the issuance of report cards. You can just stick an X there. You will need to add specially designed instruction for every goal, and you will also need to add supplementary aids and services. Keep in mind that this SDI and SAS can be found in the KDE document, um, the one that has the little schoolhouse on the front. The IEP plan book um, has those supplementary aids and services and specially designed instruction. It starts on about page 14, and you'll know you're in the right spot if you see two columns like this, and on one side you're seeing specially designed instruction, and on the other you're seeing supplementary aids and services. For students, who are under the age of five, we don't do testing accommodations, so this section does not apply. <coughs> but you will need to, to talk about um, how much time that you anticipate that he will need for services. All right, I'm going to close out this document. And actually, I think I can just go right this way. Okay. And you're next going to do an activity matrix. It's going to be based on that IEP. And I'm going to open up the sample. So you're going to create your list of daily routines in the table that's provided in the assignment. And then you're going to base the target outcomes on the three IEP goals. And then what you do in the activity matrix is just 
show across the day when that student would have an opportunity to work on or meet that goal. So for example, during arrival, he'll have the opportunity to make a choice by choosing a tabletop activity. When you're in the module, you'll notice there's a rubric and a sample act template activity matrix that you can use. <coughs> For all of the assignments, you should you know, continue to highlight um, where you think you fall on the rubric to let me know that you've in fact looked at the rubric and are self-scoring it. And here at the bottom is the activity matrix you're going to fill in. So you're going to fill in your own schedule and then type in the goals up here and when the child would have an opportunity to meet those goals. All right, the final thing you're going to do this week is discussion board four, where you're going to be responding to peers and sharing information and letting me know if you have any questions or need any support. I hope you have a fantastic final um, week in the module. Great learning, everybody.